Hello, wonderful human. Welcome back to another episode of Third Eye Sipes. I'm your host, Natalia, and this is a podcast. This is a podcast. Welcome to the podcast. This is a podcast where we talk about first and foremost self realization, the realization that the self is not the self that we thought it was, and it's really one with everything else. And some of us may already know that, but the point of this podcast is to truly embody that because we can say, yes, we are all one, we are all everything, but do we really understand what that means? So that's what we talk about first and foremost. More topics on personal development, spiritual growth, esoteric knowledge, conspiracy theories, law of attraction, manifestation, becoming our greatest versions, anything and everything spiritual in and out of this world and a bunch of other cool stuff to make you realize your truest potential, your truest nature, the essence of reality, the essence of everything, really. So that is what this podcast is. And on this episode, we are, what are we up to? Season four episode. I am not prepared to say that, but anyways, what, let's see, hold on. Seven, we're on seven guys. (laughs) We're on season four, episode seven, either way. We got a cool guest for you guys. Her name is Lynn, Lynn, the voice of dreamers. And she is a personal development coach mentor. And she works one-on-one with people to help them, especially in their business. She's very business oriented and she helps you pursue your creative, spiritually driven business. But she also helps with that personal development. You know, you can't really develop your business unless you develop yourself too. So she is an amazing coach for that. And she helps you with manifestation techniques, with finding better ways to go about managing your business. She has an amazing community called the Dreamer Community. And she helps so many people and she has helped so many people. So we are so grateful and lucky to have her on Third Eye Size. And I, I guess, I guess that's it. That's it for the intro. So just enjoy this episode and yeah, thanks. Thanks for joining. Welcome. Welcome to the Cypher. Third Eye Sifes. Third Eye Sifes. Well, I'm so glad we're doing this. <laughs> I am too, girl. <laughs> I love talking to you. <laughs> I know. Our, our last call was really cool. So uh, I guess to get started, um, just introduce yourself to the Cyphers. <laughs> so hi, Cyphers. I'm Lynn on the Voice of Dreamers, and my mission is to inspire, support, and connect purpose-driven entrepreneurs and creatives worldwide through spirituality, self-development, and networking. I'm also known as your fairy godmother, providing you with the support that you need to turn your dreams into reality. So that's exactly who I am. So I do like one-on-one mentoring, but it's spiritual mentoring. So I have a bit of energy healing and mindset coaching along with like life purpose coaching. So I can help you fully align with your heart's truest desires and your divine life purpose so that you can just get started on your journey. And sometimes I have dreamers that call me, they feel stuck, you know, we kind of, I kind of get them over their hurdles. And then I also do creative marketing, branding, and strategy for purpose-driven brands and businesses because it's nothing, it's no, it's no really, it's not really any consultants that's doing it the way that I'm doing it for purpose-based brands and businesses. And I also had the dreamer community. So it's like a worldwide community where purpose-driven entrepreneurs and creators can get all the support that they need. And then some spiritual teachings, self-development strategies. And we support one another because there's no community out there that's like really based around purpose-driven businesses and brands. And they are the dreamers. So that's who I am. That's what I do. Awesome. Yeah, I love it. And I've actually had the honor of being a part of the dreamer community. And it is full of support and so many good things to help support you in your business and whatever you're you're venturing on, especially like the tips that you give, like the whole the the new one that you posted about the God box. Like I never even thought about that. Like that's so smart. As soon as I saw that, I was just like, oh my gosh, I I I need to do this. <laughs> really? You never heard of the God box girl? Well I have like a little 
I have like this little like pot, like this little tea, not a teapot, but um, like a little pot to start a seedling plant. And I put like papers on my altar in there, like past letters that I've written that I don't want to burn yet. I just kind of keep them there for a little bit, but I never thought about making a box. I just kind of like stuff them in the little pot thing. <laughs> Yeah, I heard of it actually because I was on social media and I felt like the universe had just sent me this thing. I was really going through a dark time and it was like um, an oracle card or like a, yeah, it was an oracle card and it said, uh, God is in control of your monetary, you know, because I was really struggling with manifesting stability. Mm -hmm. And so they say you need to create a God box and it, and it said it in the card, but it didn't give you anything. So then I just Google mm -hmm. searched God box. And then when I Google searched the God box, I saw that it was like, a practice that was used and I just use it I started off with a shoebox yo yeah. I said I'm just gonna just use the shoebox and then I just have like this nice glass gold thing and then I've kind of incorporated the angels in there because that's kind of like the entities I work with so mm. I love it it really helps you like release worries like now I use it more than ever so if I have any negative thoughts or anything about people around me or their energy throwing me off, I kind of just pray about it and then I just release it and I don't worry about it and it always works itself out. Yeah, that's so smart. And I, I know that's a really good um, like way of releasing things and surrendering to things. It's just praying about it, but also like writing it down and giving it to something else. Like it doesn't even have to be another person, but just like, 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 for example putting it in the box or just like writing a letter to god or spirit and then just like here take this take this letter <laughs> like i need your help <laughs> yeah because it because spirit god uh the universe your higher self whatever entity you want to call it um <laughs> any high vibrational being they they really want to help you and they a lot of times they want to help you but they can't because they they have free you have free will so you have to ask them you know, to kind of really help you. And so we forget that we think that we have to do everything by ourselves. And then we're in this 3D dimensional reality. So it's like all these things to fear when fear is not real. It's only an emotion where it's fear itself. You know, when people say it's nothing to fear, but fear itself. Yeah, that energy fear is the fear. It's not really the thing that you're scared of. It's just fear. And it's no reason to fear when you have like all these high vibrational beings on your behalf that really want to help you. So that's what really helped me, you know, kind of like, and then, you know, we want to control everything, we want to say, mm -hmm. you know, and, that, and we end up making it worse, so. <laughs> no, yeah. <laughs> we, just, we, put our, we dig the hole deeper for ourselves. <laughs> so I shared it with you guys because I knew that, you know, we all have good and bad days, you know. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I hope that helped. No, yeah, absolutely. And that's, it's funny because that's a message I keep getting recently is you like, you don't have to do it alone. Like, you you can get help. You can ask for help. And I keep hearing that, like, in my job and just people that I work with. And it just it's kind of just a message that's been floating around that I've been hearing quite often. So <laughs> I feel like that's, like, my spirit guides telling me, like, hey, you should be asking for help right now because it's just something that keeps popping up. But it's really true that we we don't have to do it alone. Like, we're it's not like we're doing it alone anyways. It's like they're here anyways. We're just not asking yeah. for help like we're trying to control it we're we're trying to take yeah. and it, it's not even like we're doing it on purpose because like sometimes like like us for example we know we can ask for help but sometimes we just get so caught up in everything that we forget to ask for help and we think we have to do it by ourselves and we're struggling we're like oh wait we have spirit guides we have people that actually like the universe wants to support our dreams so why why do i feel like i'm doing this all by myself yeah, and a lot of times you don't realize, like, especially the angels. And I work with angels and God mm. and Ascended Masters. So when I, when I work with angels sometimes, I know they'd be looking at me like, because they don't, they don't get <laughs> angry. You know what I'm saying? They don't get angry. Like, your higher self doesn't get angry with you. They're yeah. just staring at you, looking at you, just stressing out. <laughs> and they're like, well, she just ask us for help? Good Lord. And then they give you signs like feathers and coins mm -hmm. and even stuff in nature. And it's like, Sometimes y'all have, and it, and it starts to like even manifest in your physical like body. Sometimes ringing of the ears and headaches. Oh, yeah. so they're really trying to get you to listen. So you mm -hmm. kind of make it worse on yourself. And then when you start surrendering, you be like, oh, okay. Why did I just do that in the first place? <laughs> yeah. It was fear. It was fear, you know, because mm. unfortunately, like you said, we can't help it. We, we live in this 3D dimensional reality where it's like fear everywhere. Fear market. It's like 
they give you a reason to be yeah. in this state. And then mm-hmm. if you've been doing it a certain way your whole life, and you got parents telling you why you should fear certain things and then your subconscious mind has all these negative self-limited beliefs, it's hard to kind of come out of that in mm-hmm. years of conditioning. So they understand, you know, they, I'm pretty sure like, you know, when we are scared, they're like, damn, you know, I can understand that they're not angry. They just like, dang, he's just asked for help. <laughs> Yeah, it's all go away. And it's scary though, because you got to believe in magic. You got to believe in the unknown. Mm-hmm. No, absolutely. And you brought up <laughs> you brought up a really good point um, about how we're constantly like shown free- fear and surrounded by fear, and that's what they advertise. And that's a part of the reason why we our first initial reaction isn't like to step back from the situation and to see it from a third party view and to ask for help and to come to situations or obstacles neutrally and instead we we still have like we're again we're in this 3d reality but we're also forced fear down our throats whether we're aware of it or not so even when something comes up like that like unless we're super aware or mindful of our thoughts and actions in all times our first reaction to something that may not be you know like the president like it Mm -hmm. it comes up um as fear like we we just automatically react to something new and we're we're scared or we're fearful of it or we're angry about it just that's our initial reaction because we're not completely aware of our thoughts but then once we realize wait okay i'm seeing this from a fear-based side of me then then we realize it's like, oh, okay, wait, well, that was my initial human reaction, my monkey mind. Now we step back from the situation and actually come about it a more neutralized way. Yeah, and I'm very glad that you said that because it is the monkey mind. It's like, you know, uh, the predator what did it say the predatory the predator like you know the mind where it's like all low vibrations the survival Mm -hmm, yeah like the reptilian brain sort of the reptilian brain that's exactly what it is so when you're coming from that state it's just survival instincts and then you know and a lot of times it's it comes from our fears fear-based thinking can also come from like i said the subconscious beliefs that either other people have placed in our mind or it could Mm -hmm. be previous trauma so it's hard you know when you've had previous trauma like you've been told like things are going to work out a certain way and and we end up falling on our face, you know, because it's just a part of life and we get scared to do that thing again or the new thing or to trust in the unknown, even if Mm -hmm. it means that spirit, God, your higher self is really kind of leading you to something better. It's just Mm -hmm. like, it's kind of hard for us to like release control, surrender to that. So that's another thing. So it's just like, wow, you really, like you said, you really have to be aware of your thoughts and Mm -hmm. it, you know, But once you start training yourself to, and that's why I work with the dreamers, you know, when I do the one-on-one spiritual mentoring, I really just listen to them Mm -hmm. because I'm able to literally pinpoint exactly what's going on in their emotional body and their mindset because I've been through that because I Mm -hmm. literally had to pull myself out of like psychologically damaging because I've been abused all my life, but it's it's mainly a psychological abuse. So I really Mm -hmm. had to like pull myself up out of that and understand my mind and I understood that other people around me they're just reacting in a way based it's like our, we all got our different minds our mindsets what happened to us the trauma the subconscious beliefs what we were raised by our cultures so it's like me becoming more understanding and it kind of I kind of understand you know what I'm saying mm-hmm. like why we do certain things you know why we no. react mm-hmm. yeah yeah no go, go ahead no that's it I don't want to say <laughs> No, yeah, but you, no, that that just inspired like a thought that just came up that I was just talking to my friend recently about how, you know, we've been through these things and that's why we can relate and we can understand where, you know, our clients are coming from. Um, I was telling this to my friend because we were talking about like empathy and how when I was younger, I don't want to say younger, like a little kid, but like years ago. I I felt like I was a sociopath because I couldn't empathize with people's situation. And it's not like, I, well, I hadn't really been through anything too much. Like, I, I'm like nothing enough to relate to somebody who's been, you know, through a, a, a really a lot of stuff. And even if somebody got hurt or anything like that, if they were to tell me, I would just be like, oh my gosh, like, I'm so sorry. But deep inside me, like, I wouldn't feel anything. And then I think, 
when I started doing more spiritual work and I don't know, maybe I just got older and things like that. Like, even though I still hadn't been through their certain situation, I can completely understand and empathize with them because I, I've been hurt in different ways and I know hurt is the same whether I've been physically abused mm -hmm. or whether, whether they've been physically abused or it's just the situation is different like I understand mm -hmm. pain and I understand the longing for something or someone or I understand the the abuse of something or someone or just being in a depressive state of mind like I understand even though I haven't been in the certain situation and I think that's what really helps us to to help other people because we had to have at least felt something in that sort or like been through something of the sort to be able to help people come out of that because that's how we helped ourselves come out of it yeah you're absolutely right and when you were saying that it doesn't matter what type of hurt or harm, you know, because a lot of times in society, I, in my opinion, I feel like people overlook words and what people say to people. Mm. And because, you know, there is, you know, I feel like they only think about legalities. Like mm -hmm. they feel like if it's legal for you to say these things or uh, verbally abuse someone or mentally abuse someone because it's no proof. You can't see anything mental. But in mm -hmm. my opinion, I feel like anybody who abuses someone's mind or abuses someone psychologically or is not aware of their words and how they treat people in that way, I feel like that's more dangerous than a person who actually hits someone. Because when you mm -hmm. come at me physically, at least I have the ability to defend myself. But when you're just saying stuff or you're manipulating or yeah. gaslighting or, you know, really affecting someone's uh, ability to really function, because the mind controls everything. Your mind is your ruler whatever enters your mind is is going to make or break you. That's just my opinion. That's why I'm very aware of, like, certain content I consume, social media. I take my breaks, you know, because really, I like, I think I made a video about that. I feel like it should be a federal offense for <laughs> someone to, like, literally psychologically abuse or emotionally abuse somebody because there's no proof. Yeah. You know, I just honestly believe that because you're somebody of their blessings because if they don't, if they can't function mentally, they have no control. Hello. Really strong person to fight against whatever it is that you're going through mentally. Mm -hmm. And I feel like it's just overlooked, you know, and I just feel like, you know, it's certain stuff hurt people differently based on their mind, maybe past trauma that they've experienced that affected them mentally in a different way. So me and you could probably go through the same thing, right? But because you have experienced something in a way to where it reminds you of something that you just previously went through, you're going to be, it's going to probably be harder for you to overcome that than it would for me if I probably experienced something in a certain way and it don't really correlate. I hope you make it sense. What I'm saying, it's just really oh, yeah. crazy how it is. And I feel like, you know, you know, people really, I feel like people overlook that. I hope it makes sense. Like, no, yeah, absolutely. And it's funny you say, like, um, you, you wish that they would make it a federal offense. And the first thing that came to my head was, well, they wouldn't because they are psychologically abusing us. And if that were a law, then we would be calling them out all the time. And they would be the ones in trouble because that's what most propaganda and advertisements and things on the media are it's psychological warfare and witchcraft and whether we're aware oh of it or gosh, not girl girl that's what i said i didn't mean to cut you off girl but that's exactly no, what i yeah. meant to say in so many ways you got people and i told this person this one time in my life and this person really meant a lot to me still does but mm -hmm. when this person gets angry this person say stuff you know just to, start, just to hurt people be, and then point the figure at me because I used to be a person back in the day I'll beat you up you know I was that person <laughs> like you know what I'm saying you say something to me and it hurts me I feel like I have the right to beat you up that's just how I felt because I feel mm -hmm. like you can't go around here saying what you want to say people think it's okay because legalities and it's 3D dimensional reality it's okay for you to be to do anything that has a mm -hmm. negative effect on anyone in any way and because legally in this physical reality you get away with it you think spiritually you get away with it because I have to let people know sometimes you don't know who you're talking to in the spirit you don't know who I know you don't know who I am in God you know what I'm saying you don't mm -hmm. know who the chosen I know who the chosen ones are like I just have this feeling like 
this person is connected. I can just sense it in people. And I just know who people are in spirit. I, I don't really see that. I see past that. So when people go around thinking that they can treat people in a kind of way, say what they want to say and not be cautious or aware or be, or be held accountable in some way because they say in this reality we live in, that's what they are. They can do that. That used to piss me off. It really did because I would say you don't know who that person know. You don't know who they ancestors. You don't know if they put in, they been up do something to you after you said that thing to them. They mm -hmm. could go to the witch doctor, honey, and <laughs> put some shit on your ass. Mm -hmm. And then you sitting around here looking crazy. You done lost your mind. You don't know what's going on. So you really got to be very, very careful. It's all psychological. It's all spiritual to me. Yeah. So no, I'm glad absolutely. you said that. I'm very <laughs> me off girl <laughs> i don't beat people up no more but i just let the spirit or the universe kind of handle that you know yeah they'll beat them up for you yeah, yeah they will. <laughs> every time girl every time i'll be like do you know who i am like in my mind I'm like you just doing this to me you don't know my heart my intentions behind what i was you know who i am how i really care about you micah like people in spirit their heart their their intentions behind who they are why they do what they do and you sit around here abusing them because you can mm -hmm. that oh girl that makes me mad girl like <laughs> no yeah <laughs> i so i so get that i have a funny question to ask you do you listen to oshun uh is is, you, is oshun like because it's, it's like, like the a, two girls no but it's a woman i listen to her name is House of Ashun and she's a uh, like a mm -hmm. spiritual woman and she does like uh, she kind of reminds me of myself like she does uh, collective readings for like you know a group of people who has like callings and stuff in life but I listen mm -hmm. to her and I know Ashun and like my ancestral you know and I'm mm. wearing yellow right now girl and I oh wow I didn't mean to wear yellow but I well so the topic just came up no you have okay so you have to listen there's these two girls they uh it's basically, I, I want to say, not R&B, but it's good music. And, but it's like, they're super spiritual. Uh -oh, like, it, girl, they're super me. sick. Oh, you can't hear me? Hello. Also, just a quick shout out to Anchor for sponsoring this video. It's a podcast platform that you can record, edit on your phone or computer, and it's for free. They distribute it everywhere, like Apple, Spotify, Google, a whole bunch of podcast platforms, and you can make money from it for, with, like, a very minim low minimum amount of listeners. So, like, one person can be listening and you'll still be making money, which is pretty awesome. Uh, it's literally everything you need in one spot to make a perfect podcast, to speak your truth, to kind of get your message out there. So I would highly suggest it. Um, you can find it in your app store, so I would say, check it out, guys. All right. Oh, Shun in the house. She was in the house. <laughs> Oh, oh my god. <laughs> I don't know if this is a regular thing that this app does, but or if it's just us when we no, talk. No, girl, because this never happened before. I didn't did so many recordings. This never has happened really? before. <laughs> <laughs> no, for real. She's definitely in the house now. No, but anyways, what I was saying was that they're basically these two girls, they they sing rap kind of, but it's uh it's good music, they're pretty spiritual and um know what you were saying oh my gosh what you said reminded me of a lyric that um they have in one of their songs that i was like don't you ever disrespect my god body whatever beef you got with you and god it ain't about me so <laughs> it reminded me of what you were saying because you're like like don't you think you can do whatever you want to me you don't know like who i work with you don't know what spirits have my back so that just reminded me of this i was like i wonder if she was so soon <laughs> no girl but i am wearing yellow and no shoe girl all the gods were coming through honey <laughs> <laughs> and uh, yeah i don't really work with and uh, you know what's crazy i acknowledge them though you mm. know i just don't because in my ancestry it can get very dark so i'm not mm. a dark being i'm a light worker so um, it just my gift is i just be gifted to work with angels you know and god and um, ascended masters and my spirit guides, um, they are very colorful, honey. You think I'm colorful? <laughs> like, you know, they're beautiful. And, um, mm -hmm. you know, other high vibration, they got my back, honey, you know, and I acknowledge mm -hmm. them. But, you know, majority of the work I do is like, you know, very, uh, it's, I guess, because I'm such a universal person and I have to be able to connect with all people from all walks of life, mm -hmm. all over the world. I guess God has me work directly with it. <laughs> mm -hmm. So, you know, 
that's just where I am. But yeah, a shoe has my back. I didn't even mean to wear the yellow dress. I just wanted to do just was a dress that was up and I just felt like a Disney princess like I always am. And I <laughs> just went and dressed it, girl. I was in my own world, girl. That's why I was so Love. excited to see that you had said, girl, join the link. I was like, dang, I thought it was nothing. But I was, I was ready, girl. <laughs> <laughs> I know I know it's funny because I was going to confirm with you yesterday and then I was like no nah, I think it's okay but that was also on my end too so next no, time I'll... <laughs> no next girl time. I'm not uptight girl I'm very cool and I feel like everything happens the way it's supposed to no yeah absolutely mm-hmm. well I'm glad you're wearing yellow then <laughs> <laughs> it's my favorite color really oh too. wow that's yeah. cool <laughs> Okay, well, talking about angels and all that, before I want to ask you how you started working with angels, I want to ask how you became Lynn, the voice of dreamers. I know I've read it on, I think, your blog, maybe, or somewhere in the dreamer community, but um, I, I, want, I want our listeners to, to know how you became this magical fairy. <laughs> oh, girl, it was a hot mess. It was all over the place where it was magical, you know, but um, actually... I had, I had, um, I had always had a gift of, uh, I just really was obsessed with the supernatural growing up. I just felt a connection mm-hmm. to the spirit world. And I felt like I was young and I saw things that scared me. And I felt like my family had a gift, but they just was hush hush about it. Mm-hmm. So as I started growing up, I kind of tried to push it down inside and I just weren't connected until I believe about this, was it, I was a junior in high school and I started having these intuitive feelings. But it started off as intuitive feelings, and then it would be something bad that happened about mm-hmm. somebody that I know, and then I just got scared, and I felt like people around me was trying to, um, since it was an ancestor, they were just like, they seen in a dark way. But I started mm-hmm. seeing it in a light way as I started to step into the light, step into who I truly was. So I would say around 19, I started getting good stuff. I started having the intuitive feeling, and good stuff would happen. Intuitive feeling, maybe something not so good would happen, but I started seeing more positive. And I think about 19, I got frustrated with my family and, you know, I, I came from, a, you know, we all do have dysfunctional family, but my family was just on something else. And <laughs> at 19, I was just, I had enough. I think I was just had enough and I just walked out. And that's when my mm-hmm. spiritual awakening began. But right before that, I had a spiritual advisor who, I don't know how I even came across her, but if I didn't meet her, I wouldn't be letting the voice of dreamers. Her name is Christian and she worked with angels and she had this godly presence about her and then you know I had a reading with her and she was telling me all these great things of who I was going to be and I didn't believe her because I was you know really living in a I didn't see who I was and Mm -hmm. she she really because I actually saw a spirit guide and that's what kind of woke me up and then she was just like um telling me all these things and I, like I said, I didn't believe it at the time. And then I just started walking in my truth. And as I started walking in my truth, things started happening. I started my own business at 18. But I was doing event planning and design. I got frustrated with no support from anybody. But I kept pushing. So what I decided was I started network with Lynn. I started off hosting events all over my city. And it started as for black business owners. Because in my mm. city, it was no support for black business owners. I started hosting these networking events. And then it came from black business owners that people in Atlanta started getting drifted what I did. I went to Atlanta with 50 freaking dollars. I don't know how that happened. I had a friend at the time and I had a boyfriend at the time and he said he would drive us up to Atlanta dropped us off. I was at the Motel 6 girl. I had people waiting out. I started building a following on social media and I had people waiting outside from I had a guy from North Carolina. I had people in Atlanta that was just waiting to meet me at my, at my motel room. <laughs> so I started having like a little stardom and so, you know, it started growing from there and I started having ups and downs. And I, you know, I had a, my, I would say what really shook me to my core was when I was working a job that I really hated at a beauty, beauty, uh, a hair store in the hood. That's why I was, I was around all this, just, just sad shit, you know, around mm-hmm. shit that wasn't me. And so it was kind of hard for me to maneuver. So I had a boss that was so mean. I worked six days a week. 12 hours she didn't want me to do anything outside of she knew I had a business and she tried to sabotage that so I literally lied to get off my job and you know I had this car that my grandfather had lent us to use to drive to Atlanta because I had an event this was like my breakout event I was gonna have in Atlanta I started like this big I hosted this big ass event or I wanted to put it on and so everything went wrong on the way up there and the car was breaking down every five minutes on the day of that I was supposed to be there because it was only like a few hours away from where mm-hmm. I was and I just 
felt like betrayed by God. I was mad at God because I felt like I was going through so much and I was I was working on a limited strap budget. I was really risking it all for a dream. And this happens. Mm-hmm. And so people are calling my phone and, you know, some people, you could always tell when somebody is always a hater, like the people who hated me, who just wanted to be there around me to see what she got going on was laughing at me or, Hey, give my money back. I want, you know, and then you yeah. had some people that have been following me since 19 that was supportive and said, Hey, stuff happens. I was able to network in a freaking hotel lobby and you weren't even here. And so something just pushed me to keep going. So I literally hitched hikes to Atlanta girl. We broke down in a racist town, girl, right? <laughs> and so, you know, it was a bunch of shit going on. It broke down a racist town. I called my grandfather. I said, hey, your car broke down. It's in the Zaxby Park a lot. You need to get the shit. So I ended up crying. <laughs> I went inside of a McDonald's, girl, and I met a truck driver. And I said, can you? I just told him my whole story, and I was in tears. And I was like, can you please take a to Atlanta? And he said, yeah, I'll do that. This man could have been a serial killer. This man could have just robbed us. And then my boyfriend and his homeboy at the time was with us. So he got out of the bag, but he said, hey, just come on. So I took our shit out of the car, got in the, in the truck, hitched tight all the way to Atlanta. It was like four hours away from where I'm from. He switched from his truck to his regular van, drove me all the way to the thing. I tried to give this man my last dollars because the hotel was like 400 something dollars for that night because I was going to have, I was hosting a big party in a, mm-hmm. in a luxury hotel to hire. And so when we got to the hotel, he didn't take my money. And the whole time I was going up there, it was like I kept seeing angel numbers. Like, I was on the mm-hmm. right path, and I had to end up canceling the event. And then when that happened, I was mad. I was in my hotel room mad. Then my mother-in-law at the time was like, that was dangerous. But she believed in me, so she was like, are you okay? And yeah. she knew I wasn't okay. And then I had the same spiritual advisor who reached out to me, and the angels were speaking to her through me. And I just knew that I was connected. And ever since then, I started seeing connections. And I never stopped hosting my networking events and Long story short, girl, it's a long story. Long story <laughs> short, long story short, I went through so much ups, downs, psychological shit, like things that were sent to destroy me. And I was still supporting other people. I was still inspiring people, sharing the wisdom that I had on YouTube, all over on the internet. And I just started building my stuff up. And then I became Lynn the Voice of Dreamers just this past March. I was going through like the spiritual awakening to where God had gifted me these spiritual gifts that my intuitive, he enhanced my spiritual gifts. It cause not a he or she enhanced my spiritual gifts to help y'all. So I was able to channel messages from the ethers to give to you guys. And that's how I started receiving all these ideas to help y'all. So now I finally feel like I found my purpose, but I didn't find it. It found me. So that's how I became Linda voice dreamers. That's freaking awesome. That story is so great that it just shows, like, and I I can understand how you must have felt in that situation because you feel betrayed. Like, you feel (laughs) like you were helping me all this time. I've been having all this success. I've been growing. And then you just break it down. And it reminds me of something I said to someone yesterday where I said, like, you're, you're being tested to see how bad you really want it. And... I, I saw that kind of in your story where it's just like, you're doing so good, but like, how good, how far do you want to go? But then at the same time, while like that could have been the universe testing you, it was another way to bring a new purpose into your life. So like you said, you were seeing a lot of angel numbers that in on that day. And then following that, then you were having the spiritual awakening and you became Lynn, the voice of dreamers. So that's, it was just, it, it's all part of the process, but that that's an amazing story. I love it. Yeah, girl, I'm sorry. I mean, talking ahead, but it was, it was a whole, it was just crazy. And then the guy with us, he kept saying, he was speaking spiritually. He was not a religious guy. He was literally talking to us about the universe all the way there. And really? Yes, girl. And it was like 12, 12 on the clock. And I just knew that I, it was meant. And mm-hmm. it just it just made sense. And that's why I like to share with you dreamers. Like I became Linda Voice of Dreamers because I am that dreamer. Like mm-hmm. I've lived through this so that you guys, wherever you are along your journey, who are living through something I lived through, I am the voice yeah. to keep y'all moving because a lot of dreams die because of people around people. And I felt like I fought a lot of darkness because people around me was in the hood. They was I just seen a lot of stuff that could discourage anybody or make somebody want to do drugs or stay on drugs or want to not live anymore or mm-hmm. just just be 
content with living that way and it just wasn't me yeah no I get that so do you still network I do girl I network on the dreamer community <laughs> ah okay yeah, yeah, yeah. it's ba- that's basically what it is it's networking that's yeah. cool though yeah and then even if you're not in the dreamer community it's been hundreds and I'm not over exaggerating hundreds probably thousands of people that have met through me in some type of way in life or mm. in their dreams or that can help them and stuff like that so that's what really helped me a whole lot yeah definitely support especially support in sort of like the same business and situation that you're in because you know spiritual creators and entrepreneurs like it's not it's not that it's not common, but it's not as common as a regular entrepreneur or like somebody who's just trying to do a startup. It's like purpose driven entrepreneurship, but also with the guidance of spirituality. So it's a little bit of like a more nitpick niche. And it's it's hard to find people who are in that same niche as you to connect with and to get that support from, especially in a spiritual aspect. Yeah, and even in regards to creative branding, creative marketing, like I've had consultants that are business consultants that I used to go to. First of all, I'm a genius at marketing and branding. I don't care what nobody says. Um, but yeah, I, I just went, I used to go to consultants and stuff like that for help when I was first starting out, and they couldn't see the vision. They would say it's not profitable, or you just, it's not able, because you already, as a spiritual entrepreneur and creative, or someone who's a purpose based business or brand, you're dealing with family members that don't understand your vision. You're dealing with people that is always going to discourage you in some type of way. So I, I know how that feels. So I decided to create a, like strategies and business to help y'all be successful in, in a practical way, but still bringing y'all vision to life because it's so it's very much possible when God or the creator or your higher self gives you an idea, an intuitive nudge, a flash of inspiration. That's something that you need to create because people need that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and that just reminded me of a a podcast I was listening to recently where they, I mean, we already know this, but he said it it seems like whenever you decide to take action or go towards the thing that you're meant to do, that you're most passionate about, everything just seems to work out. Like, the money just comes if you initiate your dreams into a business or a job or just your life purpose, then everything just works. Everything just happens for you. Yeah, and it's also why I'm really big on spirituality first and all mm. everything else. Like, I just got to this point. I would say during cancer season, I just was like, just because something make money, it's not making me happy. I don't want to do make money, my money that way. I want to make my money this way. Because when you realize that your source is God, when you truly, because you got a lot of religious people that claim they believe in God, but they don't because they live in fear. Mm. When you truly and I ain't trying to preach. This is God, honey. This is yeah. God right here. <laughs> when you truly believe that God is your source, nothing in this world is going to scare you. Nothing in this world mm. is going to make you feel like you can't do something or mm-hmm. that your vision can't come to life because it's a vision that God, the creator, gifted you and God is the source of money. If you need money, God is your source. Money, health, wealth, whatever it is that you want. And when you realize that, you cut out all this bullshit that's in this 3D dimension reality and nothing is really, it's all an illusion. You start to realize that. And I'd rather live spiritually than be of the world. No, I, oh my gosh. I literally love that you said that because it's so true. Like there are so many religious people and people who preach God, but then you see them that they don't have that faith. Like they claim like, oh yeah, I believe in God and all this stuff, but then they act on fear-based things and they they don't trust god and they don't see god in all things like if if you have true faith and belief in god then you would have that full faith you would just surrender everything because you know that there's you can't control everything and that there's something way bigger than you if if you fully and truly acknowledge that there is something bigger than you you're gonna want to just surrender to you want to get give everything to it because it's there's nothing you can do about it it's like it's it's where you come from there there's no avoiding it 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 loves you that energy is love and Mm -hmm. when you start to realize that when you start to realize that everything is happening the way that it should even sometimes when it hurts 
you know, it's it's just beautiful, you know, because we don't understand that. Like, when you're going through a shit storm, <laughs> you can't see mm-hmm. nothing. you like, <laughs> what is going on? But when you get out on the other side, you can see clearly now that the rain is gone, everything starts to come full circle. And you start to yeah. or universe or ascended master, Ganesh, whatever it is, entity that's high vibration that you believe in, you start to realize, you know what, that happened for a reason. And you start to realize the, the blessing in it and the, and the abundance that you gain from it. Like, it's beautiful. It's beautiful. Yeah. It is. <laughs> That's why I'm, I'm such an advocate of the spiritual path and the journey because it's like, who wouldn't want to be on this? I mean, I know, like, so, it's freaking hard sometimes. I mean, it is hard. I'm not going to say it I, I know. It's like, it's hard sometimes. But it's so worth it. Like, to know that. And, man, I was thinking about this when I saw a, a little girl yesterday, right? Like, and she reminded me as, like, if I had a daughter. And I was thinking, man, if I had a daughter at that age, like, I'd be telling her, like, even if I was thinking of going up to the little girl right then and there and telling her, like, there's something magical. She would have she thought I was crazy. But, like, as a kid, you automatically believe in magic and and everything beyond. And it's growing up and it's the adults that tell you, no, that's not real. And they try to tell you what reality is and what actually exists. And if I would have been told from a young age, which I kind of was, I, I was introduced to uh, Wiccanism and Paganism at... I think around the time I was seven, seven or eight. So I was pretty fairly young, but, and, and I'm grateful for that because I probably wouldn't be where I am today if I didn't start my spiritual journey that early. But I mean, I can't imagine if like, then I was thinking about my daughter, like from the beginning, I'm going to tell her like, this world is freaking magical. Like you don't even understand, like we're living in like a basically a fairy tale and people will try to tell you that it's not as magical as you think it is, but it absolutely is. And yeah, that's just, <laughs> that's just what made me think of that. Exactly, girl. And I'm glad that you said that because currently, and this is probably going to be in y'all channel message, I've been really getting the inner child literally letting Mm. your inner child come out to play because your inner child is what actually manifests things your inner child is love is pure like when we're children and that's exactly what i was saying in one of the uh i think it was like a one-on-one mentorship thing it was like a live stream i said when you're a child you believe that things are going to work out you have full faith in god you have full faith that Mm -hmm. you know whatever it is that you want you can get it even if something didn't work out the way that you really wanted it to you still got something better or you got something that made you happy Mm -hmm. And so it's like, it's only, like you said, it's only until as we grow up and that's where those negative self-limiting beliefs and um, toxic thought patterns and fear-based thinking comes from. It comes from when your parents, you know, and your parents, they just want to protect you. And that's how the reptilian brain is. It kind of wants to protect you. But at the same time, it's not really going to get you anywhere, Mm -hmm. you know? So, you know, that's where I keep, I keep hearing that, like, it's time for us to really like believe in magic again, believe in have faith again. Believe in yourself if you don't go believe in anything else. Like, really believe that things is really going to work out the way that it will. And it's time for life to be fun again. You know, yeah. and we are at least Leo season now. So it's time for life to be fun again. It's not, you know, time to be serious all the time. You know, and I feel like life shouldn't be that way anyway. Because I think I've seen a meme online that I shared. I said, it ain't like we're making out like this bitch alive. We all going to die. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Like, so it's like, and then it's like at the end. All you're going to have is regret if you mm-hmm. don't really do the things that you want to do. It's really too short. And you think about it, all the petty stuff that we be worried about, it don't freaking matter. Mm-hmm. It doesn't matter. Yeah. I was, t- I was telling my mom that the, the other day where she was talking about, like, oh, how she doesn't care um, about how like just super like basic 3d stuff like oh what celebrity is doing what and all the things that they show on the news she was like i can't like i don't care about that she was like i can't relate to people who just want to talk about that and i was saying i know and it's and i started talking about how like people who who admire materialism and just the materialistic world and i was saying like you can't take it with you when you leave like we're all gonna die like, we need to come to the terms the fact that we're in the process of dying like once we're born we're born to die like we're, we're already on our exactly. way towards death so we're accumulating all these things and these achievements and accomplishments and materialistic objects that we can't take with us like what is the purpose of making them your main life's purpose when in the end you're gonna have nothing like who are you gonna turn to 
at the end of the day, like what you're going to turn to all the possessions that you can't take with you. Like you're going to reflect back on your life and be like, what did I do all these years? Like, what, what am I doing now? <laughs> yeah. All you have is your spirit. You know, all you have is your soul, your consciousness, you, and you know, and everything is temporary, whether it be people, experiences, things. That's why I started to understand that love is also allowing people to be free. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's mm-hmm. scary because we don't own people. We don't own anything in this bitch. And it's crazy how people trick people into thinking, this is my land. This is my mind. And, you mm-hmm. know, I had to detach from that as, you know, cancer season started to end. I started to really detach from a lot of things that I just, and it really weighs us down when we do attach things. That's how I started being attracted to minimalistic ways of living, getting rid of things that I don't need. I don't need 50,000 bottles of perfume or I don't need all that stuff. You know, I just, you know, and I just really wanted freedom and we all want that. That's what we really want. We don't mm-hmm. want money. We want freedom. We want freedom. Yeah. That's it. No, that's so true. Like it's literally, that's, that's so true. And I, I also heard that recently too. Like everything that we're kind of talking about, like I've been hearing anyway. So it's kind of like a reaffirmation about how like that's what that's what everybody's kind of based off of is like we as humans, we want to be free. We don't want to be restricted. But then also like we build countries off of the basis of freedom and the the basis of not being not having to be controlled. I mean, look at America. America was based on the definition of like freedom like they were trying to gain freedom and that's why they created america and that's why it's the home of the free but then look at us now they're they're taking away our freedom anyways because that's kind of just what's happening with the whole system and all of that but as humans that's just what we naturally want and it's not even when you go deeper than that and when you look at it from a spiritual aspect we don't want freedom in just societal views and in our daily lives. We want liberation. We want to be free of the illusion. We want to be free of Maya and be liberated towards God to our truest nature. And that's just our innate nature to have that longing, to have that wanting to be liberated. And it reflects in our daily lives. Like, okay, we want to, we want to have financial freedom and we want, to be able to travel whenever we can and we want to be able to do the things we want to we want to have freedom in that aspect but i feel like that comes from just our natural longing for freedom of the illusion in general yes yes girl exactly (laughs) that's exactly how i feel and what's happening in the world is exactly just that it's just all i just feel like damn there's some people that really need to heal (laughs) (laughs) That's what I see when I see the news. And, and, you know, I don't even watch the news. And anyone who plays the news around me, I immediately walk out the room or I just mm-hmm. kind of get away. I don't want to hear all that. I literally live in my own world for my mental health and my yeah. sanity because people are literally fear-based, mm-hmm. you know? It is no, what it and- is. And that's what they put on the news. That's why I don't watch that. It's literally like mm-hmm. you think that it's there for to serve us. Like it's absolutely not. I, my boyfriend played like a a clip from the news yesterday, I think, or something. Like I don't. He wasn't watching the news. I think it was like something to make fun of. But it, like seeing <laughs> what they <laughs> seeing what they actually do on the news, like it's. They're trying to make it seem like they're your friends. You know, if you watch the news daily and like the, your local news, like, oh, yeah, that's the, you know, the weather girl, Jessica. But like they want you to feel like they're your friends so that you kick it with them and you're hanging out with them watching the news. But they're feeding you so much bullshit. Like they're feeding you propaganda and false opinions. And they want you to feel like they're your friends so that you can relate to them when they're feeding you these false opinions so that you can eat Mm -hmm. so you can easily just eat it up like oh yeah you know what she's right she's right we should uh tear down all take down all the trees or like something terrible like (laughs) things that we don't need to be hearing and i that i haven't watched the news since probably i had my spiritual like my real real spiritual awakening after i saw like and it wasn't even just in the spiritual aspect. I, I awoke to the fact that we're being lied to consistently, especially in the school systems and just the systems in general. But after that, I was just like, there's, I couldn't watch the news the same way. Like, I, there's no way I'm going to sit here and be fed anything else. Facts. And it's like crazy how they're arguing with each other and they look ghetto like on the news like ghetto is anything to me it don't matter who you are yeah you ghetto you're on the news arguing like 
it's just the, the presidency was ghetto how i had friends from all over the globe like i have friends that are multi you know because i come from a, a background like my grandmother she has a, a caucasian husband and all that stuff so i come from all these melting pots and they got a whole melting pot over there so i come most i just connect with people all over the world so i had a friend in what was it indonesia somewhere over there something like that he was doing some <laughs> some fifa work for me and he was like what's the what about the um the pre- the election that was ghetto. Like, that whole situation that America is getting laughed at. I hope everybody knows that. America <laughs> is getting laughed at. It's so ghetto. And I say America, and to be honest, I don't even date anybody in America. I'd rather date someone. I already know my husband is not from this country. And if I do meet him in this country, he's going to be like, babe, we're just going to leave and go to Europe, wherever we was at. And that's just how it's going to be because it is ghetto here. Like, it's just like, the great value version. It's like America is Walmart and everybody else is Publix and City Market and all that other stuff. Like, that's how I see it. <laughs> no, I swear. You're so freaking right. I literally, like, I think about that all the time. I'm like, that other countries look at us like we're a fucking, like, reality show. Like, I, and I feel that, like, I don't even see it from their perspective. I see it, like, myself. I'm in this country and <laughs> when I see the, <laughs> when I be watching, like, the, when I see things from the news or the president, like, the debate, I'm like, what the hell? is this it's like a tv show it's like it's not even real like i feel no real aspect of it whatsoever like everything seems so staged even the freaking man i was watching like some sports interview where they just finished a game they're like so how do you feel after the game like something like that like these famous freaking sports athletes or whatever and i'm just like even this is fake like it's just all entertainment i feel like everything on tv is just like a tv show this whole entire country is like a tv show and everybody else in the world is just waiting for something new to happen so they could just turn on the tv and be like, look what america's freaking doing today for real and the, the way that the shit excuse me the shit i know this is gonna be explicit but the shit I know. that they freaking <laughs> the shit that they t- have trending on twitter is stupid oh my like, gosh yeah. it's like this is we are in a serious time and y'all on twitter talking about the Kardashian, y'all talking about uh britney spears i understand you know y'all look we got so much going on in the world that we shouldn't even be worried about the stuff that we're worried about like it's just a lot going on you know yeah like it's it but it's dumb because they they want us to think about something else like <laughs> they want us to not see what else is happening they want us to care about keeping up with the kardashians or whatever that like who the hell cares what somebody else is doing in their life like that's just being nosy like, it's we got not even... our own life we got our i own know life. us people who are trying who are working to make it or chasing a dream pursuing the american dream or whatever they want to call it these are the people who y'all need to worry about. Y'all need to worry about people not going to work because they don't want to deal with your abuse. They, that's what y'all need to worry about. Y'all need to worry about <laughs> people who don't want to trust something because y'all tell us we need to get it. Mm-hmm. And it's like all this stuff that we've been, all these diseases that we have, y'all have cures for that y'all are not releasing, but y'all mm-hmm. want us to hurry up and jump to this. Mm-hmm. Uh-uh. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, I need to know what's going on. It's just, it's crazy. It's, no. it's Yeah, it is. <laughs> it really is. And it's funny you say that with the cure to the disease because I I literally was just talking about on, on uh, yesterday's episode of the podcast about the quick fix. Like, they give us they give us the thing to worry about, like, let's say the virus, and then they give us the quick fix, like, oh, here's a, you know, vaccine, and here, or here's a mask, like, they just give us the problem, and then, like, here's a quick fix, and then everybody's just like, oh, okay, yeah, I'll take it, because I just want to, you know, fix it, I just want to fix the problem, but it's not, nobody's, they're not giving us the option to think long term, like, oh, maybe we should build our immune system, or maybe we should eat better, or maybe we should provide a better breathing environment, and, and, a health environment and better hygiene and nothing no it's just like oh there's a widespread pandemic almost like the freaking black plague okay here here take a mask and here's a vaccine that's it like it's it they don't make us think about the other alternatives we just look for fast comfort and a quick fix thanks girl we have to do a show my spirit is saying collab <laughs> collab this is divine <laughs> like because we have fun and then like we could talk like off this stuff too because I really feel like you're a friend, and I and I really no, mean yeah, that. I'm for real. No, I don't. It's that, hard I, to find friends. No, especially like, the same thing. No, <laughs> I understand. The trust, like you just. 
because I feel like I'm going through a time now where I'm isolating myself from people mm-hmm. or certain things because I keep feeling their energy throw me off because they're either envious or jealous or they're in competition and I'm not like that. Like, I want to create. <laughs> I want to collab. I want to be feeling good and I feel good every time. Like, I don't feel like I have to be somebody because I feel like sometimes people are so uptight. Like, I feel like I can't be myself, like mm-hmm. cuss and stuff. You know, that's just who I am. I'm not cussing like, a, you know, I'm just goofy and yeah, you just make me feel like, you know, and I know you feel comfortable, too, because you're like, oh, my God, like you're excited to talk. About yeah, it, <laughs> others, you can't talk about it like with everybody. Yeah. Mm-hmm. People look at you like you're crazy, but I'm not because I don't think you're crazy. I think you're telling <laughs> the truth. <laughs> well thank you for that <laughs> and it's funny you say that because i was literally thinking recently so uh this new girl i work at a yoga studio and this new like person who wanted to take classes she was saying oh yeah you know i just moved here and i don't have any friends blah blah, blah. but i think like the the whole reason for her saying that was because she wanted to be my friend and like that's so that's nice and everything like i appreciate like her wanting to be my friend but I don't want to be your friend. Like, yeah. I'm not, <laughs> not that she's a bad person. She seems cool and everything. But, like, I work uh, basically a full-time job. And when I'm not working on my full-time job, I'm working at my own business. Like, I don't have time for friends. And when I want to make time for friends, it's not going to be talking about something senseless to somebody that I can't relate to. Like, it's not somebody that I can have these conversations with and just be like, yeah, oh my gosh, you're so right. And this and that. Like, I can't, I know that she's not a person I could do that with and like understand some of the things that I'll say that some people may look at me like, yeah, I don't know about that. But like, Honestly, so that's why it's, I love that you said that because, like, I can't. And then I was thinking, like, I feel like the universe is not giving me friends on purpose. Like, it doesn't, it, there's nobody around me that I can match with on the same level of conversation and, and interest and things like that. So I feel like, no, like, the universe is like, no, it's not time for friends. It's not time to, like, you yes. have a business to run. You're working right now. Like, and the only friends I'm going to give you are people that are going to support you in this and that are going to be able to inspire you and help you and, and push you further and make you grow, not something that's going to waste your time. Oh, yes. I'm glad God did that. And I feel the same way. I feel like God is, or the universe or whatever is sending me, like, you know, people who or it's kind of lit because what i'm experiencing what i'm growing through right now is like separation from people who i thought you know mm-hmm. what i'm saying that yeah. i was because i'm a friend like i'm that friend that you call me and it you know uh, you could be yourself around no matter who you are even if i don't feel like a connection i you feel comfortable to be yourself because i'm just an open person you know <laughs> and i kind of make people feel at home and i don't mean to but it's just who I am. But mm-hmm. I have to, I think God is, or spirit is saying that it's time for me to be around people who fill me up. Same way I fill them up. And I feel good with you. You know, I, I kind of trust in my intuition and tr- learning to trust again. Because I've been hurt a lot. So mm-hmm. I feel like spirit is like, these people are not here to hurt She's not here to hurt you. She's a good person. <laughs> and then you got some people around me that's like, this is who you need to block out. Mm. Or you need to take a break. And let them think about what they got going on. And then you could, so you could really feel out who's here. And then it's like, I automatically know who, like you, like you're mm-hmm. good. It's just like, no question. Anybody I have to question, I like, mm no yeah even if you have once you have that sense of like that's already a, a red flag right there it's like if you don't automatically fall in love with them in that second or feel their energy like oh yeah this is a good person like and you feel a little iffy in the beginning i don't know they're worth questioning <laughs> well you're a cancer so you're gonna help me because you're helping me kind of because i'm a gemini and i feel like we get a bad rep but we really and it was a lady online on tiktok she's they said what is a zodiac sign that you'll defend to the death and she wasn't even a Gemini. She said, Gemini. <laughs> she said, because people, they have so much love in them. And people just do them so. I was like, yeah. It's like, because we're the child of the Zodiac sign. So it's like the fool card. I think the fool is like you fall on your face a million times. Yeah. And everybody laughing at you. You know, because we really, we really love people. Like, you know. And I feel yeah, like yeah. it come off wrong because we get misunderstood. You know. And, you know, I love cancers. You know, they're sweet. You know, they're in it for the long haul and they y'all be crazy too but i love y'all like y'all sweet and y'all like 
y'all like once y'all here, y'all here. I don't have no question about it. Yeah. Well, you're gonna, we're going to have to have an astrology talk then cuz I mean, I I know astrology, but I'm sure you know way more than me. But definitely that's that'll be our next conversation. <laughs> well, I love you so much and I'm excited for you and I'm excited for your podcast. It's going to be going like wild vibes. I know. Thank you. I'm excited for you too. I literally, and it's funny that you said you started, you became Lynn, the voice of dreamers in March because literally that's when I rebranded my blog and I, I like released the, the new Instagram. So it's kind of funny how we, we kind of started at the same time, like this, this specific path and journey and then we ended up finding each other fairly early because we we followed each other around march or april and um yeah i think I mean, we're just in it together lynn so where can people find you oh girl so they can find me at lynn the voice of dreamers dot online and that's lynn with one n it ain't no l-y-n-n it's <laughs> l-y-n I'm, I'm sorry go on google it's lynn the voice of dreamers dot online so you can go ahead and everything's on there. The podcast with me and Natalia, when she's on my show, and I'm hopefully going. I'm going to write a blog post about our show that we had, and <laughs> the blog, everything, the Dreamer community, everything's on there. Lend the voice of Dreamers dot online, and the icons are at the top, so you can follow me on all social media platforms. Oh my gosh, Lynn, I love you so much and we're definitely going to be doing something soon, maybe a show, maybe we could do like, we could do a weekly podcast or I don't know, something like that, but this is something that we, that's good and we're going to keep it going. All right, girl, I love you so much and may all of your dreams come true. Bye, Natalia. Bye, Lynn. Have a good day. You too.